In the reading from the prophet Isaiah, we see that the people were fasting, but it was turning them into awful people. You know how people can get pretty grumpy if they have to fast and give something up. If, they're, um, if it changes their spirit and makes them uncharitable and unkind, it's not doing them or anybody else any good. And the prophet Isaiah is saying that the Lord's saying that what he requires um, is that they the fasting that they require is that they give of themselves to those who are in need, to feed the hungry, to shelter the homeless, to free the oppressed, to reach out to those who are crying out in need. And that is the fasting he wants, sacrificing themselves in their own convenience and their own desires and their own wants because they're looking out for the needs of others. And in the gospel today, it seems Jesus is saying the same thing. They're criticizing his disciples for not fasting as the Pharisees are. And Jesus is saying, well, the bridegroom is still with them, meaning himself, and that's why they're not fasting. And we can say, well, is Jesus with us or is he not? Um, we, in one sense, we ask that question, no, he is not physically visible to us. And so Jesus has gone, so it's time to fast. And yet, on the other hand, by reason of our baptism, He's intimately close to us, very close to us, in this Holy Eucharist especially. And so we have to do both. What Jesus is saying is that our fasting, too, must be come from the love relationship that he has with us. Um, Jesus has entered into, us, uh, into a relationship with us of a deep spiritual union of love, and that should overflow to others. We all know people whose homes just seem to be open to everybody, where parents just open their doors and friends of their children come very willingly and openly to their house because they're always welcome. And the whole family seems to be ready and willing to reach out to people in need in the community, in their neighborhood. And, and that's inspiring, but that's exactly the kind of fasting the Lord is asking that if we enter into that love relationship like two people in marriage, then that love should overflow to the needs of others. And so we have many opportunities to, to help people who are in need. And it's not only monetarily or physically, it's often spiritually. People who just need some words of comfort or encouragement, um, someone in a nursing home that no one seems to ever go and visit, um, just to reach out in love to somebody. What a great act of sacrifice that is. And so in the Roman tradition, um, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving have been the three hallmarks of our Lenten practice. Prayer not only more, but prayer that is better, that is deeper, that is really thinking about the presence of God within and among us and opening our hearts more deeply to him. And almsgiving too, um, giving to those who are in need, as I said, not only physically but spiritually. I can remember... <clears throat> I think I remember as a, as a boy, the fasting that was required in the church was pretty strict. I remember my dad taking cheese sandwiches to work every day um, because he had, I think we were only allowed to eat meat once a day during the week, wasn't that right? And then on Fridays, of course, all through the year, we didn't eat meat. And it was a way, it's a way of reminding ourselves that being, by depriving ourselves of something physically, like eating or drinking something, um, we're taking control of our spiritual lives, and it should make a difference in our life. And if it does not, then we're not doing it correctly. Um, we need to give up something so that we can be a better person, is what the fasting is really all about. So in the church, in lessening the required amounts of fasting, didn't say that we should do less self-denial. We indeed should do more at our own choice, and that's what's most important. I know for years, you know, the, the church still requires that we fast every Friday of the year. I don't know if people realize that. Um, but when we stop having required not to eat meat every Friday, um, just on the Fridays during Lent, um, some people thought, well, I don't have to worry about that anymore. And I, for one, I tried to do different penances on Friday. But I decided some time ago to go back to not eating meat every Friday. And it's been an interesting experience because, in fact, I would rather eat seafood than meat anyway, so it never seemed a sacrifice. But the fact that I'm conscious of it 
as every Friday comes around, um, you know, I can go to the refrigerator at lunch and think, oh, I can have a ham sandwich. No, I can't. It's Friday. It makes me stop and think. Um, it, it makes me remember um, that I have a relationship with God to continue working on. I found it an interesting experience um, as I continue to do that. So I just share that with you, that I think if we do it right, um, it makes us think of the Lord, and it makes us draw closer to him. Let us stand and offer our prayers and petitions. <clears throat>